first of all, that was only made amazing with the sound accompaniment, which reminds me, I have to rewatch Scary Movie. That was incredible. This is Sports Center. Hey, I'm Marissa Roberto, and yeah, the NBA officially kicked off last night with two games. But for us north of the border, the season really starts tonight, as the Rats host the Cavs. Now, despite what Masai said on Media Day. I would use the word rebuilding. Uh, that's, the, that's, that's the right word. This is still a very exciting and important season for the Raptors. For starters, it's the 30th anniversary. So break out the purple jerseys and get ready for all the nostalgia. But this is also an important season when it comes to the development of Scotty Barnes, RJ Barrett, and Emmanuel Quickly, two of which just got paid nicely this summer. But the question needs to be asked, are you really re Building. If you have three guys making over 500 million combined over the next five years, because it sounds like a pretty pricey rebuild, I don't know. You know what? It's fine. I'm just jealous. I'm just jealous. Now, speaking of RJ, he will be out tonight with that right shoulder injury. He looked great in the first game of the preseason before suffering that injury, but still has not been cleared for contact and has been practicing in a limited capacity. So no real idea when we'll see him on the court. Looking at the odds on FanDuel, seems like they definitely agree with Masai because their Raps win total is set at 28 and a half. They're just below six to one to make the playoffs and plus 185 to make the play-in. So if this season vote wins, then what's more important? Tanking for a good draft pick and the potential of Cooper Flag, or the development of Scotty, RJ, and IQ? Look, we haven't even played a game yet and we're talking about tanking. Let's let them play some games first. In a season full of huge receiver moves, we just got another big one. As there's an agreement between the Chiefs and Titans to send DeAndre Hopkins to KC with a conditional fifth round pick going back to the Titans that can become a fourth if the Chiefs make the Super Bowl and Hopkins plays 60% of the snaps. This has been a long rumored trade, but the two sides reportedly did not start talking until midnight last night, with a deal being struck around 5 a.m. this morning. For Casey, this was something that needed to happen, as their receiver room has been hit hard by injuries. Hollywood Brown and Rashi Rice are both expected to miss the entire season, and Juju Smith-Schuster has already been ruled out for Sunday's game versus the Raiders. Trading for a receiver before the deadline is nothing new for the Chiefs, as this is the third year in a row they've made a move for a wideout. In 2022, Kadarius Toney, last year Miko Hardman, who went on to catch the winning touchdown in overtime at the Super Bowl, and this year Hopkins. As big as the three previous receiver trades we've seen this season have been, we could still get another one. As yesterday, Diana Rossini reported that the Rams have called multiple teams about trading for Cooper Cup. One of those teams was also reportedly the Chiefs. But according to Rossini, the Rams needed someone to take a large portion of Cup's salary, and Casey did not want to give up high picks. Now, according to Adam Schefter, Cup is aware his name has been mentioned in trade rumors, but is focused on, quote, being the best LA Ram he can be. That's so sweet. Trade deadline is just a couple weeks away. Are we getting some fireworks or what? Should we start worrying about the Oilers off Full start or what? If you're getting deja vu, there's a reason. Last year, the Oilers were 2 9 and 1 in their first 12 games and wound up firing their head coach. Sure, they turned around and made it within a game of the Stanley Cup, so maybe we just need to make it relax, you know? But the current struggles are a little hard to ignore, so Oilers fans, is it time to panic yet? Edmonton blew another two goal lead last night against the Hurricanes. They are second worst in the NHL in goals per game, scoring just two. But don't worry, it gets worse. They have the league's worst penalty kill by far, at an abysmal 54.6% and their usual deadly power play, he's tied for fourth worst in the NHL at just 10.5%. McDavid's line mate Zach Hyman, who has a great history against Carolina, couldn't get on the board last night and is still in search of his first point of the season. Speaking of his struggling teammates, the Oilers need a lot of help from their depth forwards. Their bottom six players have combined for three goals and two assists this year, and their newly added second liner has contributed absolutely nothing. This team needs more than just encouraging performances. They need wins, they need goals, they need their power play to go back to where it used to be. And until they start getting that, there won't be much to cheer about in Edmonton. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Oilers fans, okay? <laughs> now, Jim Burr Gambling at West Chain. Great to see you, Wes. Hey, great to see you, Marissa. Okay, Wes, the Raps start their season tonight. And before we get into our best bet for tonight's game, give us one Raps future you love. I like Emmanuel quickly to average seven or more assists per game, which you can find on FanDuel at plus 110. When it comes to season-long bets for the Raptors, there's just too much uncertainty. I describe it as talent versus intention. I think the Raptors, they're good enough to overachieve against all of their season long um, bets that are available, but you don't know when the front office is gonna pull the shoot, so I would caution and stay away from those. Okay, what are we on for tonight? For tonight, we got an STB built. You're gonna see it on the broadcast as well. We got Barnes to hit six dimes, we got Quickly to hit three threes, and we got Mobley to score 15 or more points. So at this stage in the season, you want to really take advantage of any preseason reads that you've had coming into the year. So there's two things uh, I want to bring up here. Number one, this is the first full season with Barnes as the full-on leader of this team. This is going to be an opportunity for him to really set up all his teammates and show that he's a leader. Quickly, same thing. They've talked about him coming into this, this year. They want him to be more aggressive, go hunt his own shot. And Darko, he's been very vocal about IQ, looking to get up eight to 10 three-point attempts a game. 
on the other side. Cleveland, they got a new coach in town. Mobley, they got they want him shooting the three ball more. So I think you're going to see him be a lot more active when it comes to being part of their offense. And I think it starts tonight. Wesley Chang, a pleasure as always. Hey, thanks for having me. That's all for today. We're going to be tomorrow through Pacific. Have a good one.